I bid you welcome. Welcome to Monster Kid Theater. I'm your host, Rich Savage, coming to you from the world-famous Monster Kid Studios, located in the nation's oldest, most haunted city, St. Augustine, Florida. It feels good to be back with all you Monster Kids after taking a little break for the holidays, and I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season. Now, it's the start of a new year, and I'd like to wish everyone a happy, healthy, and prosperous 2021. Before we get into tonight's film, please take a second, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell. As always, feel free to leave your comments below. And visit our website, monsterkidstudios.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you won't miss a thing that's happening here at Monster Kid Studios. Well, since we've been away, I've had some time to catch up on the emails that everyone's been kind enough to send me. And there seems to be some concern over the lack of robot movies featured here on Monster Kid Theater. There's also been a little noise about the conspicuous absence of uh, mummies in our feature films. And uh, I, I took a minute or two to think it over, and you know what? You've got a point. So, we're going to kill two birds with one stone tonight, with tonight's feature, the robot versus the Aztec mummy. That's right. You're not dreaming. All your wishes have come true. Robots and mummies, all in one movie. How great is that? Never let it be said that I don't go the extra mile to make my audience happy. Now, a little bit about the film. The Robot vs. the Aztec Mummy was released in 1958, and it's the story of a mad scientist named Dr. Krupp, portrayed by Luis Aceves Castaneda, who is determined to find and seize an ancient Aztec treasure. Now, after discovering the location of a treasure map, he decides to build a powerful robot to get rid of the mummy warrior protecting the map. Dr. Krupp eventually unleashes his humanoid robot on the mummy in hopes of getting the map and using the treasure to build an army of killer robots. Because if you're a mad scientist, you gotta have an army of killer robots. That's, that's the way I see it anyway. Now only Dr. Krupp's colleague, Dr. Amada, played by Ramon Gay, and his wife Flora, played by Rosita Arenas, stand in his way. Robot vs. the Aztec Mummy is the third film in a trilogy of Aztec Mummy movies. That's right, you make three of these things. Featuring Papolka, the mummy. It was preceded by The Aztec Mummy and The Curse of the Aztec Mummy. All three films were shot in 1957, one after another, without a break in the production schedule. Now, the films were directed by Rafael Portillo. Portillo was a prolific Mexican director, and he directed about 40 films in an almost 45-year career. But it's the Aztec Mummy trilogy made early in his career for what he's best remembered. Now, if you think all we're going to do tonight is watch mummies fight with robots, you're sadly mistaken. <laughs> During the breaks, we have an all-new Monster Kid Top 5, and we're also going to take a look at some amazing mummy discoveries through history. And so they don't feel left out, we've got a little feature we made ourselves, paying tribute to some of cinema's most celebrated robots. Now, from 1958, passing your seatbelts, the robot. Versus the Aztec mummy.
mind penetrate the mysteries of the great beyond? Who knows? This picture is based upon an extraordinary experiment carried out by Drs. Hughes and Tooney of the University of Los Angeles. There is no doubt as to its authenticity. Testimony of people participating in the experiment sworn to by a notary public preclude the possibility of any fraud. This picture is a combination of factual data mixed with fiction. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Dr. Diaz, Dr. Esther, what a pleasure to have you here. The pleasure is all ours. I hope you're feeling well. Very well, thank you. And you? The same old laborers, always working. Trying to find new ways to help patients die painlessly. Please don't choke. But won't you come in? My husband is in there waiting for you. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm most grateful to you for having taken the trouble to come to my home this evening. It's no trouble, Doctor. We're delighted. Who'd complain at having the opportunity of visiting with such a beautiful young lady as your wife, Flora? Flatterer. How are you, Pinky? Fine, Doctor. Please sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. Dr. Diaz, Dr. Esther, I've taken the liberty of calling you here because I think it's time I revealed something very serious. Let's hear it, then. It's about the Aztec breastplate and the bracelet, gentlemen. How's that? Why, the whole thing was forgotten long ago. It's a closed book, Doctor. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I thought, too. But things have happened lately that I think you two should know about. My friends, be patient and allow me to tell you a story. Although you already know part of the history, there are some things that you ignore. I think the best thing to do is to begin at the beginning. You both recall, do you not, that occasion years ago, five to be exact, when we held a convention on psychiatry in this city. I attended and gave a talk on the results of my studies related to the regression of a patient to a past life through the use of hypnosis. My theory was greeted with amazement and incredulity by the members of the convention. Among others attending that day were you, Dr. Esther, and you, Dr. Diaz. You both had come with Dr. Krupp, and my theory was made the subject of ridicule and I left the convention bitter and defeated. I got to the house feeling unsure of these ideas. I'd been squelched. But I just couldn't accept the other opinions of my theories. I was sure they could be proven. That night, Flora offered to undergo a hypnotic test. She was fully aware of the danger of the experiment. Assisted by her father and by Pinkate, I hypnotized her. During her past life, Flora had lived among the great peoples of the Aztec. She told us such strange things, amazing things. Far back in those ancient years, her name had been Zochi. She was deeply in love with a brave and high-born warrior called Popoka. Their love was so strong that it would not answer to reason. So they decided to run away, even though it was her sacred duty to preserve her maidenhood and be sacrificed to the god Tikatlikopa. But they were discovered by the tribal priests. As punishment, the warrior was buried alive and an eternal curse was placed upon him.
Kaki Bobo Kaki. Ou mate me kao ni wiki, me pal konji. Ni mission groupilia, ingwa ni kele huia, ma yewi katineiti. Mon nem al kayelis, mo yolo yash. As for Zochi, she was adorned with the bracelet and the breastplate, which were engraved with hieroglyphics, indicating where the Aztec treasure was hidden. Then they cut out her heart. But as she began to regain consciousness, in the exact moment I came to the end of my little experiment, she struggled and began to shout. Laura had a terrible attack of some kind, and her blood pressure dropped to such an extent that we were afraid she might die. But a couple of weeks later, we discovered that Dr. Krupp, a man who had suddenly become a dangerous criminal in the underworld, had been there spying during my experiment. The experiment had been a complete success, but since we realized that no one would believe us unless we could come up with absolute proof, we decided to search for the breastplate and the bracelet. Flora acted as our guide, and we discovered a hidden passageway beneath the pyramid of Teotihuacan. Professor, I think we're up against a dead end. It can't be possible. The Aztecs wouldn't build a secret passageway just to have it end up for no rhyme or reason. There must be some way through that wall. Professor, it sounds hollow. But it's so thick that it's senseless to try to break through. Hand me a hand, please. Flora, come on. This must be a little room beneath the pyramid. Yes, but I know it isn't the temple. Look what I found! Come here! What is it? It looks like a well. Well, I think it's an air shaft, but undoubtedly it will lead us somewhere. Probably to the temple. Well then, what are we waiting for? Come on.
After descending several flights of stairs, we suddenly encountered the hair-raising face of the god Ticatlicopa. We had reached the lower temple and the Aztec tomb that Flora had mentioned. And there we came across the skeleton of what had once been Zochi. On the chest lay the solid gold breastplate. Zochi, this is horrible to think I was she. You know, we're the first persons to break in here. It's a world that slumbered all these years and begins to awaken now. We found what we wanted so badly. No, Edward, don't do it. I'll be able to demonstrate this to my colleagues and prove my theory. It's simply amazing. Just a few days after I got the breastplate, I asked you all here, including Dr. Krupp, as you'll recall. Certainly. I'd say that it was the greatest experience of my life. And mine, too. You must also recall that I said that I'd study the breastplate and that I'd try to decipher the hieroglyphics and see what they meant. Since I knew that the message would tell how to find that hidden treasure. Yes, but I remember your telling us that you also needed the bracelet. Exactly, Doctor. One object complemented the other. Without the bracelet, it was simply impossible to decipher the code. So I decided to go back for it, in spite of the Aztec curse that surrounded it. He who defiles the tomb of the Aztecs and finds the sacred plate will run the risk of death in his family as well, until the breastplate is replaced I depended upon the help of my father-in-law and of my good friend, Dr. Pinkate. So once again, the three of us got together and returned to the tomb. When we reached there, and I was just about to pick up the bracelet, my father-in-law stumbled on something and called my attention to it. Look here. Look there, doesn't that grave belong to Popoca? Yes, according to the legend, it does. In that case, where is he now? We heard a strange shuffling noise that was coming in our direction. And then out of the darkness appeared the ghastly and terrifying Popoca. The Aztec warrior had come back to life. Come back to life to retrieve the objects that had been left in his care for eternity. Hey there, Monster Kids. I hope you're all enjoying The Robot vs. the Aztec Mummy. A little bit more insight to the film. Uh, it was released a year prior to Hammer Films producing their version of The Mummy, featuring Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Now, at this point in Mexican cinema, the late 1950s, there was a wide range of films being released that were similar in plots to the old Universal Horror movies. But the filmmakers were sly enough to make the changes necessary to avoid any lawsuits from Universal. Uh, variations of Abbott and Costello v. Frankenstein and other classic monsters were especially popular with Mexican audiences. So it's not surprising that producer-writer Guillermo Calderon and writer Alfredo Salazar chose a topic similar to Universal's Mummy and the Mummy's Hand. 
along with its sequels, The Mummy's Tomb, The Mummy's Ghost, and The Mummy's Curse. A couple of notes about stars of tonight's film, Ramon Gay and Rosita Arenas. Ramon Gay is playing Dr. Amada and was a star during the golden age of Mexican cinema. He's best known for his portrayal of Dr. Amada in all three of the Aztec mummy films. Tragically, he was killed in 1960 when he was shot dead during a dispute with another man over actress Evangelina Elizondo. And if you're wondering what could uh, get somebody that jealous that they would shoot another man, uh, just check out some old photos of Evangelina Elizondo, uh, Google it, and uh, I think you'll see she was quite the knockout. So you can see why somebody would get upset that another man was, uh, you know, out to dinner with their woman. <laughs> if you look at Evangelina, she was a very pretty woman. Now, Dr. Armada's wife, Flora, is portrayed by Rosita Arenas, and she began her film career at the tender age of 16. She was most prominent during the 1950s and 60s, and today she's living in Caracas, Venezuela, and is 87 years old. Now, it's time to get back to the movie. But first, the Monster Kid Top 5. Tonight we'll be counting down the top five all-time mummy movies. Timely, yes. And you may be shocked to find out that none of the Aztec Mummy Trilogy films made our list. I'm not sure how that's even possible. <laughs> Roll the top five. Number five, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. He who is buried here shall henceforth have no name, shall cease to exist in the minds of man, as she has ceased to exist in life. For thousands upon thousands of years, she lay there, perfectly preserved in all her beauty, in all her evil. Across the centuries to another time, to another place, she is back amongst the living to claim all that is hers. You're ready to kill me? No, 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 no! To threaten those who woke her from her eternal sleep. Not as life, standing over there. No. It happened. You have to help me. You know its power. I have no mind left, no will. In the name of Terra, she is back. To destroy those who helped to raise her evil flesh and blood from the mummy's tomb. Bubba Hotel. How could I have gone from the king of rock and roll to this old guy in a rest home? You were an Elvis impersonator. You fell off a stage and broke your hip? Who was it? 
20 years ago. That's where they took a piece of my brain. I got a little bag of sand up there now. Jack, President Kennedy was a white man. They dyed me this color. What we have yet, Shady Rest, is an Egyptian soul sucker of some sort. Some kind of Bubba Hotep. You know, a mummy hiding out, feeding on the sleeping. <laughs> He can just keep on feeling it unless he's finally destroyed. All right, man, let's go. Number three, The Mummy, 1999. Many men have wasted their lives in the foolish pursuit of Harmonoptra. Most have never returned. I think you found something. I call it the doorway to hell. Oh my God, it does exist. You have unleashed a creature that we have feared for more than 3,000 years. He's the bringer of death. He will never stop. This summer, Universal Pictures invites you on an extraordinary adventure. Beyond life and time. Oh, no. Where did you get this? On a dig down in Thebes. <gasps> Jonathan, I think you found something. There is an ancient legend of a place known as the City of the Dead. They call it the doorway to hell. Where the earliest pharaohs were said to have hidden the wealth of Egypt. Are we going into battle? There's something out there. Something underneath that sand. They came to uncover its secrets. Mummies, my good son. This is where they made the mummies. <laughs> they sought to unlock its treasure. And then there was light. Oh, boy. What they did... Oh, my God. It does exist. I think this may be the Book of the Dead. ...was unleash a force unlike any the world has ever known. You must not read from the book! What the hell is that? You have unleashed a creature that we have feared for more than 3,000 years. Whoa! He will regenerate and no longer be the undead. We are in serious trouble. On May 7th... Do you swim? If the occasion calls for it... Trust me! It calls for it! Universal Pictures invites you... His powers are growing. Run! This just keeps getting better and better. ...to experience the adventure... It appears he's already chosen his human sacrifice. ...that will live forever. If he turns me into a mummy, you're the first one I'm coming after.
2, The Mummy, 1959. Egypt, 4,000 years ago. A land of strange rituals and savage cruelty. Many of their secrets are still hidden from the eyes of 20th century man. Secrets that protect their dead. Supernatural powers that once released can live again in our modern world. The Mummy, the Living Dead, bringing terror and death across 4,000 years. He was a high priest of the great god Karnak until one night he attempted the ultimate in blasphemy. He was condemned to guard forever the princess he had loved and protect her from intruders. Go now. Go and destroy those who desecrated the tomb of our princess. He who robs the graves of Egypt dies. He who robs the graves of Egypt dies. Number one, The Mummy, 1932. Death, eternal punishment for anyone who opens this casket. Mummy. Is it dead or alive? Human or inhuman? You'll know. You'll see. You'll feel the awful, creeping, crawling terror that stands your hair on end and brings a scream to your lips. <coughs> There's nothing on earth like the mummy. You will not remember what I show you now, and yet I shall awaken memories of love and crime and death. Now I know his horrible plan. He is going to kill her and make her a living mummy like himself. <laughs> our top five mummy movies now leave comments below let us know if we've missed one of your favorite mummy films now back to the robot versus the aztec mummy let's put out the lights i have an idea i don't think he can stand it turn them on shine them in his face turn them off again lights again you better run i'll follow you P.K. Professor, help me! Whoa. 
Hold me fast. <laughs> To be perfectly frank, I thought my time had come. If it hadn't been for my friends, I'd have been torn to pieces. It's incredible. A mummy comes back to life after hundreds of years in a sepulcher. Dr. Diaz, you have my word of honor that the story I have been telling is the truth. Popoka, as I told you, was punished because he loved young Zochi. His curse was to guard the priceless bracelet as well as the golden breastplate, to do so for all eternity. Under this terrible curse, his poor soul would never find repose. Continue, Edward. Well, the bat on many occasions tried to steal these objects that I had found. Time passed rapidly. I thought the whole business had been forgotten. But I found that the Aztec curse still followed us. One night, the mummy came to this house to get his treasure pieces. And he kidnapped Flora. He tied her to the sacrificial stone where the skeleton of Zochi had lain for centuries and placed the bracelet and the breastplate on her. Obviously, the mummy intended to make history repeat itself. He was going to cut out Flora's heart and offer it to the god Tecatlicopa. The three of us rushed to the pyramid to try to rescue Flora. And we stood transfixed for a moment at the scene we saw. The mummy was standing next to the stone. He was holding a knife high in his right hand. I jumped to the floor and luckily was able to hit the blade with a bullet. It lunged at me and its enormous hands got hold of my throat. Life was leaving me rapidly when Flora's father suddenly held a cross up in front of its face. With this, he was able to hold the mummy at bay while we freed Flora. In a frenzy, we untied her and got her away from the stone. And then the professor ordered us to get her out of the pyramid. His tone was so adamant and I was so concerned for Flora's safety that we obeyed him blindly. But when we got out, I realized that he hadn't followed us and I decided to go back for him. In that very instant, a tremendous explosion shook the pyramid. The professor had given up his life in order to save ours. Since the mummy had stayed under tons of boulders and the bat had been sent to prison, of course, we thought the whole business had come to an end. But it didn't happen that way. The bat, who is really the infamous Dr. Krupp... Krupp? He broke out of jail. In his mad determination to get my treasure, he kidnapped my daughter and Flora and then hypnotized her. Do tell us the rest, my friend. Then what happened? In this state, she took the doctor to the Aztec tomb. He immediately located the mummy, taking the breastplate and the bracelet. Well, Krupp called me on the phone not too much later. I was ordered to go there and decipher the hieroglyphics to enable the demon to locate the treasure. And you agreed? Can't you see that I had to obey? To save my wife who had been kidnapped by the doctor and my little oh, girl. But there's another thing that you should know. It'll surprise you to hear that Krupp once said that he needed that Aztec treasure to work on an experiment. He also said that the experiment, of course, was costly. Now you know how I was forced to do it. I went to Krupp's laboratory and began to decipher the hieroglyphics. In the hands of those criminals, our lives were in grave danger. Our only hope was that the mummy, guided by unknown forces, would be able to find Dr. Krupp's hideout just the way he had found my house on a previous occasion. I dragged the thing out as much as possible, but the moment arrived when I could stall no longer. I finished it. That's fine. I hope you'll keep your promise now and set us all free, Doctor. Eh? Oh, yes. You know what to do now, don't you, Bruno? Just what are you going to do? Murderers? What do you think? You unscrupulous pig!
you here? No! Help me! No! Please help me! Help me! Well, he realized who the criminals were and settled accounts with them. Then when he saw the doctor trying to escape, he picked him up like a rag doll and threw him into a pit full of rattlers. Afterwards, with the breastplate and the bracelet in his hand, he slowly shuffled away into the darkness and soon was lost from sight. I'll never forget the strong affection I had for Flora's father. Such a kind man whose intelligent advice brought about our salvation. And the mummy went back to the pyramid? No. The explosion destroyed his temple. He had no reason to go there. In that case, can't you tell us where he is? Permit me to continue. All these tragic happenings couldn't go unattended. So I went to the police and they heard the whole story. Then I returned to Krupp's hideout, accompanied by the chief of police and a couple of his men. You can imagine our surprise when we discovered the place was completely empty. The laboratory had been dismantled, and the bodies of the criminals that the mummy had killed had also disappeared. Continuing our search, we hurried to the snake pit. I was awestruck when I realized that the body of Dr. Krupp was no longer down there. Then, to our horror, we discovered that there was a small door in the back wall of the pit through which the doctor could have escaped. Obviously, the doctor had escaped. And strangely, I don't think he'd been bitten. The man's running loose. So that would mean that the doctor kept trying to come by those articles so that he could locate the treasure. You're right, my friend. He did just that. He began to bother us a couple of weeks later. It happened quite suddenly, you see. One dark night. This is the house. Do you really think this plan of yours is going to work, Doc? You'll see. Now, I want you to be quiet. Keep still and don't make the slightest noise. Flora, it is my wish that you come to my side. Flora, I command you to come to me. Flora, I command you to come to me. Flora, are you listening? Come here to me. Not try to fight it, come here. Flora, do not try to fight it, come here. Are you listening? I command you to come to me. Laura, you are to do as I command. Come here. You can hear the ways that are being sent out by that mummy, can you not? I know well that you're able to lead us to him. Yes, I can. Then tell us, where is Popoka? 
in the ancient cemetery. Come with me. What are you doing here? Answer me! What are you doing here? Come now, Flora. Come on, we must hurry. Now, as promised, we're going to take a look at some amazing mummy discoveries. Check this out. Today, mummies are the most prized and highly valued artifacts of antiquity. But it might surprise you to know that prior to the 19th century, this wasn't always the case. First up is ginger. Nicknamed for its red hair, ginger is the most famous of six naturally mummified bodies excavated in the late 19th century from shallow graves in the Egyptian desert. It went on display at the British Museum in 1901, becoming the first mummy to be exhibited in public and has stayed there ever since. Ginger and the other bodies found with it are the oldest known mummies in existence, dating back to about 3400 BC. Artificial mummification was not yet a common practice at the time of their deaths, but their bodies were naturally dried and preserved by the warm sand in which they were buried. Next we have Hatshepsut, the most prominent female pharaoh. Hatshepsut reigned over Egypt for roughly two decades, undertaking ambitious building projects and establishing valuable new trade routes until her death in 1458 BC. The archaeologist Howard Carter discovered her royal tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings in 1902. When he located her sarcophagus some years later, however, it was found to be empty. Carter also unearthed a separate tomb, known as KV-60, which contained two coffins, that of Hatshepsut's wet nurse, identified as such by an inscription on its cover, and that of an unknown female. In 2006, a team led by Dr. Zahi Hawass set out to determine whether the anonymous woman in KV-60 could be the missing queen herself. The vital piece of evidence was a molar tooth found in a wooden box bearing Hatshepsut's name. When Hawass and his colleagues compared the tooth to a gap in the mummy's upper jaw, it was a perfect fit, leading the researchers to conclude that the search for Hatsetsu was finally over. And now we come to possibly the most famous mummy of all, King Tutankhamun. Ancient Egypt's boy king became pharaoh at the age of nine and ruled for approximately 10 years. Relatively obscure during his lifetime, Tutankhamun, or King Tut, became a household name in 1922 when the archaeologist Howard Carter found his remarkable tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. 
Despite several apparent grave robberies, the tomb was crammed with a wealth of ancient treasures, including jewelry, gilded shrines, and a solid gold funeral mask. The discovery prompted a worldwide fascination with Egyptology in general and Tutankhamun in particular. Carter's partner and financier, Lord Carnarvon, died of an infected mosquito bite several months after the pair opened the tomb. His death inspired the myth of the mummy's curse, according to which anyone who dared intrude upon King Tut's grave would suffer his wrath. Ramses II, regarded by many historians as Egypt's most powerful pharaoh, Ramses II reigned for six decades, 1279 BC to 1213 BC. He lived to be over 90 years old and is said to have fathered upwards of 100 children. His body was originally entombed in the Valley of the Kings, as was customary for a pharaoh, but ancient Egyptian priests later moved it to thwart rampant looters. In 1881, Ramsey II's mummy was discovered in a secret royal tomb, along with those of more than 50 other rulers and nobles. In 1974, archaeologists noticed its deteriorating condition and flew it to Paris, where it was treated for a fungal infection. Before the journey, Ramsey II was issued an Egyptian passport, which listed his occupation as king. Deceased in parentheses. Let's take a trip to the Valley of the Golden Mummies. Located in Egypt's western desert, the Bahari Oasis was a major agricultural center during ancient times and is now home to several archaeological sites, including a Greek temple dedicated to Alexander the Great. In 1996, an antiquities guard was riding his donkey on the temple grounds. Suddenly, the donkey's legs stumbled into a hole, revealing an opening in the desert floor and the edge of a tomb. A team of archaeologists, led by Dr. Zahi Hawass, began excavations of the site, known as the Valley of the Golden Mummies. The first few expeditions have uncovered several hundred mummies that date back to Egypt's Greco-Roman period, as well as a treasure trove of artifacts. The diversity of the mummy's adornment suggests that the site served as the final resting place for every level of society, including wealthy merchants, members of the middle class, and poorer inhabitants. Archaeologists believe that as many as 10,000 additional mummies may be lying under the sand. Well, I hope you all found that interesting. I sure did. Now, back to our feature film. The robot versus the Aztec mummy. You stinking devil! Oh, I'd like to chop your rotten flesh to pieces! It'll certainly be great to do so, but you know it's not possible now. We're going to make my experiment, so we must wait. Wait? Wait? When I got so much hate eating down deep inside of my guts, you ain't got no idea what it is to live like this! Hiding myself from everyone and everything just because of that stinking monster. Calm down now. <laughs> I promise you that he'll be destroyed. <laughs> but give me time. Just a little time. It won't be too long before you can have your revenge. Let me get the breastplate first, the bracelet. So near to them. And yet so far, because I can't touch them. It's too dangerous to do it. He'll wake up in an instant and destroy us. But I'll get him back. I swear it. No matter how long it takes me, you devilish mummy.
Come on, we better go now. We'll be needing a lot of time if the plan I have is going to work out. Anything you say. Come, Flora. Now listen to me well, Flora. You'll go up to your room, and you'll go to sleep. And when you awaken, you'll act quite normally. And you won't recall a thing. Do you understand? You won't recall a thing. Now walk. Go on. Go on. Well, good morning. Good morning, sweetheart. You must have been very tired. We were waiting down here to have breakfast with you. We could both eat a horse. Bacon and eggs, like always? Nothing for me, Maria. I have a terrible headache, dear. What's that you've got on your gown? It's all dirty. That's funny. You've been down in the cellar. No, sweetheart. I don't know. But look at your slippers. They're all muddy. Now, come on. What have you been up to? Nothing. It's funny, these are new slippers. I just bought them, and now they're dirty. I think you went out last night. No. After I took my bath, I went to bed because I was tired. Yes, but you got up later on, didn't you? I did? No. Yes, because I woke up a couple of times and you were not in bed. No, you're mistaken, darling. I assure you I didn't leave my bed for a second. You went out last night, honest, Mom. Come on, let's forget the whole thing for now, all right? Remember, she has a great imagination. Tell me, has your headache passed? No. I'm going to lie down for a while. Excuse me, please. You children go out and have your breakfast. Yes, Daddy. Come on, Piketa, I want to talk to you. Oh, boy, what a liar you are. You shut your big mouth, you're the liar. Piketa, I'm very worried. This attitude that we've observed in Flora is not normal. What's more, I'm afraid that the bat has something to do with this. Then you really think that child was telling the truth about it? And that her mother got up and went out? Yes. It's quite probable. But Flora insisted she didn't leave her bed for a second. Because she can't recall anything. When she got up last night, she was sleeping. I don't understand it. It seems impossible. I'll tell you what I think. She was hypnotized and could be under post-hypnotic suggestion. So it seems to me that the bat controls her from a distance. It's logical. This strange attitude with Flora indicated that unscrupulous villain Krupp made her leave the house during the night. But where did they go to? Can't you guess what he's trying to do? You certainly know what he's after, the breastplate. And besides that, the bracelet. Precisely, Pinkate. Then you think that she was made to go along with Krupp, and he wanted her to guide him to find the mummy. Exactly, and you and I must go there. I'm going to find out if that scoundrel stole those objects. But that'll be difficult. You can't investigate without any clues. Yes. Listen to me a second. Suppose we took her slippers to the laboratory to have that mud analyzed. That could help us, don't you think? Yes, yes, that might just be the solution. We'll take them, but I don't think she should find out. 
We'd better do it all in secret. Come on. Yes, now I'm quite sure. It's embedded in the dirt. Of course, it's a small quantity, Doctor, but your suspicions are correct. They're pieces of marble. You're sure it's marble? Can you identify its source? Is it a special kind? No, it isn't, but it's a fine quality. It might be a Karar marble, I can say that. It's used in the construction of mausoleums, as far as I know. Thank you. This is the last cemetery. We've seen all the others. If we don't find anything here, we'd better forget about it. Hello there. Good evening. Tell me, are you the watchman here? Yes, sir. Anything I can do for you? Oh, yes. We'd like to ask you a few questions. We'd like to know if you've seen anything strange the last few weeks or more recently. Anything very suspicious in or around the cemetery pertaining to one of the graves. Are you from the police? Yes, that's right, my friend. And we're after a very dangerous criminal whom we suspect has been hiding in one of the cemeteries around the city. Well, the fact is, something pretty doggone curious did happen. Just two nights ago, I was surprised to run into a young woman here wearing a kind of white robe. She seemed to be asleep, and two men entered the grounds with her. And when I asked them who they were, one of the guys slugged me, and they left me out cold here on the ground. Then we'll be taking a look around the grounds. You can do anything you want. Anything you want. You see? I was right. At last, we're on the trail. Now, the tough part is yet to come, because we've got to walk around till we find the mummy. Look, we'd better separate now. Go that way, Pinkate. I'll go over there. Go on. What happened? Look. Come on. The breastplate and the bracelet. They didn't take it. All this I've just told you occurred almost five years ago. We visited the crypt from time to time to take a look at the mummy with its breastplate and its bracelet, too. And the bat, is he still around? You know, he disappeared from sight. Then, just a couple of days ago, we read an article that is very interesting. We were profoundly surprised by it. According to the article, a couple of nights before, a cadaver had been robbed from the amphitheater. And the individual who did it was the bat, of course. Yes. In the beginning, we had some doubts. The man who had been attacked couldn't offer us a description of his assailants. But 
later on, our suspicions were confirmed. Yesterday, there was a burglary in the Radiology Institute. The thieves took a machine that uses radium. They also stole a brain out of a laboratory. This time, the police were able to identify the crooks as the bat and all his band. As a matter of fact, they were almost captured. Are there any good clues, Doctor? Lead is the only metal capable of resisting radiation. Lead material in this city is handled by many wholesalers. After visiting the first three or four... Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. What can I do for you, gentlemen? We're sorry to be a bother to you, but is it just possible that lately you sent out a large shipment of lead? Could you give me that information? In the last two days? Or it could be a week, more or less. Let me check. We keep a record of our shipments in this book. Yes, here it is. Exactly five days ago, we made delivery of 20 plates of lead shielding four inches in width to number 22 Shade Street. Many thanks. You're welcome. After investigating for days, at last we got the address. I think that Bat had made his hideout there or his laboratory. Well, I don't see why this thieving Dr. Crump would go to the effort of stealing radium, a complete human brain, and also the body of some man. Do you recall that the bat once told Flora that he was working on a new experiment? I think that is the explanation. It's possible. But there's no doubt that Dr. Krupp and his criminals are planning to cause trouble. Certainly, that's also my opinion. Now, I'll tell you why I called you here tonight, gentlemen. Because you both are scientists, and you'll be able to combat the situation. Just in case we end up being murdered. You mean to say you two are thinking of going there without taking the police along? Yes, because you see, we're still not sure that that's the Bat's laboratory. And the police still don't have much faith in us because of what happened before. Flora, in case we're not back here at the house by three in the morning, I'm leaving it up to you to call the police. Edward! Please, you two. Dr. Armada. What a pleasant surprise. Bruno? A souvenir of the mummy. The boss is going to be very happy to say hello to you two again. Come along. Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the film. And now, I want you to meet my friend. Well, you want to help me? Yes, you can. This is Monster Kid Theater. Salute to all the robots that couldn't be here tonight. Especially the best one. That's you, right, Robbie? <laughs> you know it. Please enjoy.
Okay, I think it's time to get back to the movie. A robot versus the Aztec mummy. Found out in front. Dr. Amada and his shadow. This is a pleasant surprise, gentlemen. After such a long time, I come face to face with such good friends. Exactly where did you find them? Out in the shop there, looking around. I offer you my congratulations because you are magnificent detectives. Did anyone else come with them? Nobody else. I saw them when they drew up in the automobile, alone. Bruno, aren't you going to attend our guests the way they deserve? Go fetch chairs for the gentlemen. Sure, right away. Tell me, how's your beautiful and charming wife, Dr. Amada? I learned about your marriage, and I admit it's a bit late to say it, but receive my congratulations. And Pinky, how are you these days? Are you still the champion of rights? There's no doubt about it, and I'm glad. Come over here. Who would have thought that you'd be here at the moment to witness this? Because you're about to see something that will astonish you, truly unbelievable. <laughs> When you feast your eyes on this, I don't doubt that you'll be amazed, Doctor. And you'll be the first to congratulate me. Frankly, I'm happy that you came here to visit us, Dr. Amato. You're a man who is basically an intellectual, and that's why you'll be able to understand the greatness of my invention. I think you remember that time we met. Since then, I've worked day and night without resting for a minute. And during all that hectic time, I explored powers that no one else knows. All those great mysteries, the very basis of creation. Then that means that you defy all the limits that were put down by God. There are certain secrets that we could explore and discover rapidly. And that's why it's such a shame that fear impedes us so, Dr. Amada. You're completely mad and ignorant also. <laughs> Don't you respect research at all? Don't you want to learn to know why a body functions? I do. And at last I found the cause. Take a look at this heart that's beating. It lives. It lives and pulsates because I gave it life. And if I can give life to inert material, why can't I give it to the bodies that are damned to death and decay? No one can possibly imagine how I worked. When I dug in the mud with these hands and entered tombs, I tortured many animals, with pleasure, to find the answer, answer to man's existence. You're insane, do you know? I decided to create a man, a breathing body, a real man. And I have made that dream come true. There you have the greatest creation of man's intelligence, a human robot doctor. Tonight, I'm going to find out. Tonight, I'm going to put it to the supreme test. I'll activate the creature. But this is monstrous, Doctor. If it lives, then my triumph will be complete, Dr. Amara. Because I'll get the treasure, and I'll be rich. This thing I created has enormous power. And you'll watch it. Now then, life for the robot. Doctor, watch this!
2.30 already. Don't you think it would be better to call the police now? I don't know what to do. No. Let's all wait till 3 a.m. and respect the doctor's wishes. Suppose they're in danger. <laughs> you can see it standing there. A marvelous machine, a tribute to the great intelligence of man. A human robot. With this shining creature, no human being on this earth can oppose me. Do you understand? Do you know what could have happened to you right now? Had I not diminished the electric force, the current that makes him move, and that is contained in this apparatus? With the slightest twist of this dial, you two would have been converted into atomic dust instantaneously. Because the robot utilizes radium and has sufficient power to disintegrate anything in the world. To write, it meets the mummy. Bruno, prepare the special plates. The lid will shoot my truck. Hurry, time is flying. Tonight, my robot has to make a visit, you know, in a certain cemetery. What time is it? Ten minutes to three. I told you there's no time to lose, Bruno. Hurry, get going! <laughs> I want the police. It's urgent. Headquarters, I want to talk to the chief of police. I want you to stop and think about this. A new kind of world. An army of robots obeying me. <laughs> the human species. Sheep obeying my orders. A new theory that man has not dared imagine. I'll make some more. Maybe a thousand. Now that I know how, the rest is easy. But for that, I need money. The treasure of the Aztecs! That's why tonight the mummy will give me what I want! Boss, it's all set. Fine. You two will stay here and guard our distinguished friends. They mustn't get away. They're an extremely important cog in my plan. I'm sorry that I can't take you along, but you'd only get underfoot. But I'll return, gentlemen, to inform you that I could destroy the mummy. And with the gold breastplate and bracelet in my hands, you'll begin once more to translate the hieroglyphics. <laughs> this time you're helpless, because no one knows you're here. Dr. Amara.
Let's hurry. I'm afraid for their lives. What happened here? Chief, you can arrest those two men there in the other room. Come on. Doctor, the bat has gone to the tomb where the mummy is. Let's hurry. There's no time to lose. Bruno, take the breastplate and bracelet off of him. Yes. At last, you devil. At last, I'm going to have my revenge.
in memory of the great love that once existed between us. Stop all this death and destruction. Take these objects that are yours to guard and go back to the grave of our ancestors where we should never have interrupted your eternal sleep. Well, we've come to the end of another episode of Monster Kid Theater, and I hope you enjoyed the show. If so, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for alerts. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, and I'll be seeing you next time right here on Monster Kid Theater. <laughs>